Hello there, Chris Gillian here from tarolhack.com uh, with another tape in my VHS preservation project. Um, this is the Sega Saturn magazine, well it's essentially a Sega Saturn VHS, but it was given away with the first issue of Sega Saturn magazine, uh, which was a British magazine. And yeah, it was designed to, it was basically a big 30 minute beast, which was long for a, a free video given away with a magazine, usually they ran about 10 or 15 minutes at most if you were lucky. Um, but this one in particular was quite the beast. Um, partly because it was the first issue. I think that was why, and the Saturn had already been out um, a while by the time this magazine came out. So the aim was to kind of show the games that are still to come on the Saturn, while also kind of reminding people what games were already out for it. So that was the general purpose of the video. Uh, but before that, we've got this kind of odd advert trying to put across the point of what it's like to play the Sega Saturn. This is exactly how it, uh, how it feels when you're playing Daytona. Although not really because the Saturn version of Daytona wasn't ideal and we'll get to that later. Uh, but yeah. Sega always used to make really great promo videos like this. If you look at my previous upload of the Mega CD video they did, it's this Similar sort of idea. To the real world, Sega Saturn. Really clever. Right, so first of all, on the tape, they focused on early versions of some of their big games, first being Sega Rally. Um, it says December 95 there, that, that was the case in America, but it didn't come to Britain until January 96. Um, this one was actually, it, it was pretty close to the arcade version. The Saturn promise kind of arcade quality games but it wasn't quite as powerful as Sega's kind of AM2 uh, Sega's kind of uh, sorry Sega's model 2 arcade boards um, so, so the Saturn always kind of looked not quite as good as the arcade games but decent decent kind of attempts at it so this one was actually pretty close this is one of the better attempts at um, arcade style gameplay on the Saturn uh, but it still wasn't really arcade perfect because Model 2 board was still more powerful. Uh, a lot of sacrifices had to be made here, so the draw distance is quite severely cut down. You can see things appearing in, in large chunks in the background, um, like that big cliff just appearing out of nowhere. Um, the polygon count is kind of brought down. The quality of the textures is lowered. The resolution is lowered compared to the arcade version. Actually, the US version, the American version, actually looked worse, although only a tiny wee bit. The European version and the Japanese version had a tiny wee bit more detail, um, and when you did the replays, they had more camera angles and stuff like that. Uh, uh, although it doesn't look as good as the arcade version, it did have a better soundtrack than the arcade version, well, although that's debatable, that's what I think at least. Um, it had the full proper CD quality. Uh, soundtrack by Naofumi Hataya, who did he also did the music for uh, Japanese version of Sonic CD and games like Restar and Knights and um, the Space Channel 5 games. He did all those, so he did the music for this kind of Saturn version of Sega Rally, uh, which is quite good. What else? Uh, the Saturn version obviously had the kind of normal arcade mode that you would expect, similar to the arcade game, but also the time attack. Um, and a two-player, multiplayer kind of split, uh, split screen mode and you could customise your cars as well in, in the time attack but only kind of basic stuff like suspension and the tyres and the handle and stuff like that. Um, when it came out in Britain, Sega were quite cheeky with it. They sent out a press kit, Sega UK, to people with a fake kind of tax disc I don't know if this is the case in other countries, but in the UK you, put a, you used to put a tax disc, still do, on your car windscreen to show that you paid your car tax. Um, so Sega sent British Press a fake car di a fake tax disc saying, they said on it, play, don't pay. Um, it was basically trying to suggest that instead of paying your, renewing your car tax, you should buy Sega Rally instead <laughs> with the money. Uh, which is quite cheeky. Uh, they're also trying to stir up controversy and hope that some newspapers would report on it, but the fact you've probably not heard of that campaign kind of suggests that it wasn't that successful. Um, 
So yeah, there we go, so it's Sega Rally. There was a version released later on called Sega Rally Championship Plus in Japan and America, Britain didn't get it. Um, it's kind of the same, it had online support for really kind of early online gaming that was added to the Saturn later on. Um, and it supported the 3D control pad, so the Saturn got an analog stick later on. Um, and the new version of Sega Rally supported that, which is quite good. But yeah. I mean, it is what it is. It's Sega Rally. It's, it's a cool game. The I always preferred the Dreamcast version. There was the, the second Sega Rally game came out on the Dreamcast. Um, and that's the one I was I had most time with. Um, that I spent longer playing the yeah the Dreamcast one than the Saturn one. But this is still a decent <clears throat> a decent attempt at it. You can tell, like I say, it's it's a lot less. If anyone's just familiar with the arcade version, this is, isn't quite as sharp, which is quite clear, but still, um, considering what was out at the time, this is a great kind of attempt to, to capture some of the arcade experience at home, if not a flawless rendition of it. Um, but yeah, anyone who frequented arcades up and down Britain and probably America as well, there was always a Sega Rally arcade machine in, in pretty much every single arcade for a while. Um, it was just it was the done thing. There was that in Street Fighter, occasionally Final Fight. There were some games that you just knew you would see in every arcade. Um, Sega Rally was one of them. Also Daytona, uh, which we'll get to later on. But yeah, there we go. Sega Rally. Um, they certainly did um, enjoy milking it in this video, though. Um, I think that maybe the end of the Sega Rally bit. No, apparently not. They decided they want another race. Three, two, one, go. Medium right. Medium left. Medium left. Medium right. Well. They're always the Sega racing games were always good, or, or the arcade style ones. Um, similar to Ridge Racer, there was always that kind of rivalry between Ridge Racer and Daytona at the time. Um, now this was a very, very, very early demo of Virtua Fighter 2. Um, this was a rolling demo that was originally designed for the Tokyo Toy Show in summer, in June '95. Um, and it just showed off the character moves. This is Pai and Lao, who had previously been in the first Virtua Fighter game. Um, and it's showing off the kind of new music as well. The kind of CD quality music. Um, yeah, this is just a very, very early, like, I think it was 30% um, complete demo just to show. <clears throat> this is a, a, a demo showing off the two new characters. Virtua Fighter 2 had two new characters. This one, because. Lion or Leon Raphael, I never knew how to pronounce him, he's a French guy who's got a kind of praying mantis fighting style. Because he's light, it's, it's spelt Lion, but because he's French, I'm assuming it's Leon, it's spelt wrong. Uh, so there's him, and there's also Shun D, who's coming up soon. Here's the bit of him, he's a kind of better character. He's got a Chinese guy who's got a drunken kung fu style, so he kind of pretends to be drunk and does all these mad kind of front flips um, as if he's just totally gone with it, <laughs> like he constantly falls over. Um, an intriguing style. You saw it in some kind of martial arts films back in the day. But yeah, there you go. That's the kind of that was the earliest seen demo of Virtua Fighter 2, and then they, there was this 40% version. So this was um, a later demo of the game, um, but still uh, an extremely, extremely early demo. No sound here, as you can see. Um, there's no sound effects. Um, only throws work and they do massive damage. Punches and kicks aren't doing any damage as you can see there. Uh, the characters don't have any shadows. It's just a, and there's no replays you can see. There's a, this is a very very early version of it. Uh, but you can already see how it's looking. Um, Sega had already brought out the first Virtua Fighter on the Saturn uh, kind of early early days. But people weren't happy with it because it was really glitchy so that the textures were really flat and the polygons were all kind of flickery and there were loads of kind of long loading times and stuff like that. 
So they brought out Virtua Fighter Remix uh, to fix a load of these problems, and which it did. But it came out in October '95, and then this came out in Virtua Fighter 2 came out in December '95. So it's only a couple of months before, which is a bit annoying. Um, this is kind of similar to Sega Rally, and that they had to make some compromises to get it working um, on on the Saturn. Uh, the arcade version had fully 3D backgrounds, but polygonal backgrounds and stuff. As you can see, kind of here, it looks 3D, but it isn't really. It's just a flat 2D image. Um, that that wall background on a plane. So as the ring rotates, the, the, that's a flat image which just kind of turns with it. So that that was a shame. That and, and there's no lighting as well, but that's just that's one thing. But that said, it ran at a higher, either the same or a higher resolution than the arcade version, and it kind of aimed for 60 frames a second as well. Um, 50 frames a second in PAL regions, obviously. Um, so it's still a really good port, despite the kind of backgrounds not looking so good. Um, but because the background, they had to make compromises as well. One of the levels in the arcade version was like a raft going down a river, uh, but because the Saturn version couldn't handle that sort of thing um, and can just do like static backgrounds, um, that stage was replaced and it's just like on the shore of a river instead, which was uh, not quite as good, but. There you go. But yeah, all in all, though, it was a decent weekend. The frame rate was important, and they they got it they got it almost spot on here. So um, people ended up really happy with it. It was a half decent um, arcade port. It's a fair play to them. But like I say, you can see this is an extremely early version of it, but it was already shaping up to look like a good game. Um, yeah, it was. The, the, later on, the Saturn like, developers did figure out how to get those background fixes. So games like Fighters Mega Mix, which had, which mixed characters from Virtua Fighter and Fighting Vipers and other kind of Saturn fighting games, they put some of the old Virtua Fighter two stages in it, and they were 3D and polygonal this time. Yeah, so they did eventually fix it, but not as not by this point. This is still fairly early in the Saturn's life, and they still hadn't managed to work their way around it. The Saturn was a bit of a prick to develop for. Um, and this was still developers, including Sega themselves, still kind of finding their feet with it and trying to figure out how to get the most out of what was a powerful enough system at the time, but not the most powerful, certainly nowhere near as powerful as their arcade boards. Um, so there were some, comprom uh, some compromises had to be made. But yeah, there you go. It was always an interesting game, Virtua Fighter. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting because Sega, uh, Saturn and PlayStation always had these rival uh, franchises, so you had Ridge Racer and Daytona competing, then you had Virtua Fighter and Tekken competing. Um, even though, oddly, Ridge Racer and Tekken were both Namco games, they were so early on in the PlayStation's life, they were just immediately associated with Sony and the PlayStation, even though Namco made them both, um, they became the PlayStation ones, so Virtua Fighter and Daytona were the Sega ones, and um, Tekken and Ridge Racer were the PlayStation ones, even though they weren't really. There we go. The latest Virtua Fighter, of course, is playable in Yakuza 6, which just came out at the time of recording this, um, which is a nice wee touch that you've got a full version of. Um, and a, a fantastic fighting game uh, built in. Right, Virtua Cop, here's another very early 30% complete version. Um, as you can see at the top there, 1995 Summer Toy Show version. This was shown at the same toy show as that really early Virtua Fighter 2. Um, the demo is shown off the character movements. This was shown at the same one. So this is just one, a one level demo. Um, just shown off the game's first stage. Um, it's been played with a cursor here, but it came out. It launched with, it launched in two versions, like a standalone one and one bundled with the Virtua Gun, uh, which is what it was called in in Europe and I think maybe Japan as well. In in America, it was called the Stunner <laughs> for some reason. Um, and although the gun was black in Japan, um, in Europe it was blue, and in North America it was red, just to make it obvious this is a toy. It's not a real gun because there's a lot of kind of controversy about that at the time. 
Uh, but yeah. It was one of the first games that used the Sega graphics library. It was a kind of set of tools that Sega's development team AM2 made uh, to help third party developers make Saturn games because the Saturn was, like I said earlier, famously a bit of a prick to develop games for. Um, so Sega had kind of developed these tools to help third parties out and Virtua Cop was one of the first games to use it uh, just to kind of try and make it a bit easier for developers to get their heads around it because up until this point some of them were kind of going at a really low level um, trying to figure out how the machine worked and trying to get write their own tools and their own uh, kind of soft their own engines and stuff for it um, but yeah the um, Sega graphics library kind of helped that game over what a dick um, up next is Wing Arms. This one was originally known as Mystery Plane, <laughs> like when they were developing it. Uh, I don't know why I remember that. Um, it probably just as well they changed that. Um, it supported the. There's a thing called the Sega Mission Stick, which was a big, massive joystick thing. It was split, split into two parts. You had one big, huge joystick, like a proper flight stick thing, um, and then you had a separate component. That it attached to, that just had all, all your buttons and stuff on it. And the gimmick was that the joystick could attach to either the left or the right hand side of the button deck, so that if you were left handed, you could plug the joystick into the other side and, and do that, uh, which was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. It's was, it was a standard kind of air combat type game. Um, it's alright for, for the time, uh, for its time. You've got a first person shooting as well. I'm not sure how much a Sega Mission Stick would cost these days. Certainly in Britain you'd imagine pretty pricey because it was never uh, released in Europe. It only came out in Japan and America, that stick. Um, obviously a fairly niche thing as well. Not everyone's going to need a big flight. Uh, a big flight stick for a console like the Saturn, uh, so you've got to imagine they didn't sell too many. Right, World Series Baseball. Um, baseball game you'll be stunned to hear. Um, there was already a Mega Drive game and a Game Gear one called World Series Baseball, but this one had nothing to do with it. That one was developed by Blue Sky Software, uh, and this one is just handled by Sega. Sega developed this one, the kind of Sega Sports brand. Um, it got a sequel as well, called World Series Baseball 2, <laughs> obviously. Um, at the time this looks stunning, because it, although it's, it's, it's kind of, clearly now you look at it as digitised players, kind of Mortal Kombat style, using that same method. Used in Mortal Kombat and NBA Jam and other kind of midway games where they took digitised versions of real people. Um, so they're just sprites because again the Saturn was really good at handling 2D stuff um, and sprites and stuff like that. It uh, wasn't so good at handling 3D but it was a master at handling 2D. Here's Clockwork Night 2. The first Clockwork Night was, uh, came out around about the Saturn's launch and was like a 2D platformer. 2.5D platformer I think they call it because it was still polygonal. Um, and this is a sequel, it was kind of more or less the same thing. Uh, same sort of thing, same kind of music and graphics and stuff, except the hero, uh, Pepperucho, I believe he was called, uh, he can now ride this horse thing, um, and stuff like that. It was, a, it was a cool game, Clockwork Night and Clockwork Night 2 were kind of praised. The first one was a bit clunky because it was a launch game, uh, and again, you got kind of got the feeling the devs hadn't really got their head around the hardware yet, but um, certainly the sequel was... Um, much better as far as most people are concerned. NHL All Star Hockey. This one was developed by a more live NHL action footage here. It was developed by a studio called Grey Matter. Although Sega Sports were had the brand and everything, it was developed by Grey Matter, who was like a, I believe, a Canadian studio. Um, they'd previously made uh, Wayne's World on the Mega Drive and. The Incredible Crash Test Dummies on the Mega Drive as well. Um, and Bob on the SNES, I don't know if you remember Bob or kind of robot thing, they made that as well. And then 
moved on to this NHL All-Star Hockey on the Saturn. Um, looks fairly decent for, for, its, for its age. Again, using digitised characters as well. That was the, the thing at the time. Here's Cyber Speedway. There's an interesting one with this. As you'll hear, if you, especially if you watch the non-commentary version of this, it's got a proper soundtrack with singing and everything. The, the soundtrack for the American version of this was done by a um, a band called Bygone Dogs. And this was a rock band that Sega had set up its own kind of music label type thing called Sega Music Group. And the first band that signed up, well, maybe the only band that signed up, was this rock group called uh, Bygone Dogs, and they made music for a few Sega games, including this one, Cyber Speedway. So that's why it's got proper rock music. It's like exclusive to this game, recorded by Bygone Dogs. So there you go. Hang On GP95, this is obviously based on the old Hang On, Super Hang On arcade games from the 80s, um, where you rode a motorbike. Um, it was originally called Virtua Hang On, um, which probably, I don't know if it would have made more sense or not, but, um, and it was obviously renamed Hang On. Although it said Hang On GP95 in this video, um, it ended up being called Hang On GP96 in Europe uh, because it didn't come out here until 1996. So there you go. Formula One. This ended up being called F1 Challenge by the time it came out. Um, you say there F1 Live Information. That was the Japanese title for it. Uh, but it was called F1 Challenge here. Um, although it was an F1 game, it only had a f like four tracks. Um, one of which was like a fake track called Neo City. Um, and only had like five or six real, they were real uh, racers but only five or six of them, so you could be like Schumacher and Damon Hill and a few others like that, but um, so yeah, it was a, it was a licensed proper F1 game but with fewer, um, didn't have all the tracks and didn't have all the cars, but it had some, so it was a kind of arcadey version. Basically if Daytona was an F1 game this is what you would you would get, or Sega Rally or, or Virtual Racing, this was a kind of F1 version of that. Um, but it was fine. It was an F1 game, it was fine. Right, so they're also coming soon, but this is where they kind of skip through loads of games and do loads of kind of brief footage of a lot of kind of preview games that are still to, that at this point had still to be released. So you've got X Men Children of the Atom. Like I said earlier, the Saturn was um, fantastic at handling 2D games. Um, a lot of people. Bought a Saturn just for all the 2D, all the kind of fighters and stuff, um, because it handled. It was built in a way that handled them absolutely flawlessly, uh, or certainly a lot better than the PlayStation could. So the PlayStation strength was 3D. The Saturn strength, despite also being a 3D based system, its strength was actually a 2D system. So games like um, this X Men: Children of the Atom were hugely popular in the Saturn. Um, Here's NBA Jam Tournament Edition. Also kind of popular, but <laughs> for different reasons. Um, this is kind of more based on, uh, more similar to the arcade version. But yeah, it can be a bit of NBA Jam. Obviously got um, rebooted a number of years ago by EA. Um, didn't do anywhere near as well as this one did, which is a shame because it was still good. It was still a fun game. This is a tournament edition where you had these kind of power ups like that five, those stars with the fives on them. If you did a dunk or a shot, starting from there you would get five points. Oh, WrestleMania the arcade games. This was a claims attempt at doing... Midway's attempt at doing a Mortal Kombat style wrestling game. So digitised characters, you had to put in button combinations to do the moves. Uh, over the top kind of stuff. Um, slightly racist, there's Yokozuna who was like the Japanese fighter. And every time you punched him, like sushi would fall out of him, which is slightly odd. Uh, it was pretty rubbish, but there was a guilty pleasure of mine. Um, as you can see here, this ver the ver version of Virtual Racing that was released on the Saturn actually Sega had nothing to do with it, um, other than giving the the rights to Time Warner Interactive, and they were the ones who made this one. So the full name is actually some like Time Warner Interactive presents VR Virtual Racing. Um, which is quite a mouthful. Um, it wasn't that good, to be honest. It was by this point, Virtual Racing was Sega's first attempt at doing a polygonal 
racing game, so it was a big deal in the arcades when it first came out, because it was like, wow, look at this, this looks like 3D. But by the time it came to Saturn, no one gave a shit, because um, Sega Rally and Daytona were already on it. Here's JVC Victory Boxing. Um, if you're American watching this, you might not recognise the name. It was known as Center Ring Boxing in America, so that's why. He may... said this really weird taunt where he goes, Poor baby. I think he'd do it in this video. <laughs> there you go. Vintage. Mortal Kombat 2 is another one, kind of like Virtual Racing, that was massively out of date because this came out two and a half years after the arcade version did. Um, and fans were just like, this is a bit shit because it was missing some sound effects, it had some loading times, it had some slowdown as well at times. Uh, so, despite the power of the Saturn and despite the fact the Saturn handled 2D really well, it was a pretty bad port. Um, Alien Trilogy was okay. It was a first person shooter, uh, which had three kind of sections based on Alien, Aliens, and Alien 3, but very, very, very loosely based on them. Like the, obviously, this is the Alien section. Um, and his clearly fuck all to do with Alien, um, other than the fact there's an Alien in it, but it was fun, the, the cutscenes were fun. Shellshock was done by Core Design, who ended up doing uh, Tomb Raider. Um, as you can see, it's a kind of first person tank game, it had a really cool soundtrack. Um, so it was around about the time, obviously, CD media was, CD games were becoming the norm at this point. Uh, you had Windows 95 had just come out, and CD ROM was becoming commonplace all over the place. Um, so you were starting to get really cool soundtracks in games like this because of a proper CD audio. Um, and Shellshock was a good example of that. Here's Tilt. Um, in America this was Hyper 3D Pinball, so um, you know by that name. It's a pinball game. I mean, there's not really much you can say about it. Um, it is what it is. Never played that one. And then finally it ended with a few games that were already out, just to remind you, if you just bought the magazine and were just buying a Saturn, by the way, here's some stuff you're already buying, here's Bug. Bug is famous for being one of the very first 3D platformers, uh, even before Super Mario 64, but obviously it didn't really count as a proper 3D, it's still a kind of 2D style platformer, it's still on, you're still going straight on plane, along planes, it's just that some of them go into the distance, so it was like... It didn't have the three Roman like that Mario 64 did. Here's Virtua Fighter Remix. Like I was saying earlier, the first Virtua Fighter was pretty bad because it was kind of rushed for launch. The so Virtua Fighter Remix fixed things by putting textures on the polygons and fixing all the kind of bugs and stuff. Panzer Dragoon, a famous one of the best games on the Saturn. Um, kind of on rails shooter on a dragon. Um, it got a sequel. It got a couple of sequels actually, but one of the sequels. Panzer Dragoon Orta uh, was released exclusively on the original Xbox and just recently at the time of recording this got put on Xbox One backwards compatibility so that's great here's Daytona, this one was massively cut back compared to the arcade one this is another kind of launch era launch window title so it was kind of the draw distance was cut, it was absolutely savage and the frame rate went from 60 in the arcades to like 20 uh, which is pretty bad it's Shinobi X, this was called Shinobi Legions in America um, it had some hilariously terrible uh, live-action cutscenes, which are worth a watch. Um, Victory Goal. This is actually international Victory Goal. There was already a Victory Goal game in Japan, um, which just had J-League teams in it. So this was a kind of sequel, which is kind of pretty much the same game, but it replaced the Japanese teams with international teams. Uh, Pebble Beach Golf, or Pebble Beach Golf Links, I think was its full name. Continuing the Sega... Kind of sports tradition, even though this wasn't a Sega sports game. Uh, continuing that tradition of that time of using full live action, um, digitised versions of real people, real sports people. Digital Pinball, another one, another pinball game. Uh, this is called Last Gladiators in America, I think. Um, but again, it's just a pinball game. It's, it is what it is. Um, yeah. You know what you're getting with pinball, don't you? And then Mist, I think this is the last one on it. Um, massively popular adventure game, which I never liked, but hey, that's just me. Catherine, my love. But there you go, that's the video. That's the Sega Saturn magazine uh, video of, of all 30 minutes of it. 
Hope you enjoyed it. Please do check out tarothack.com for more of these um, if you want to see more. Uh, there'll be a link in the description if you want to see the rest of my VHS preservation project tapes. Um, and I'll catch you later with another video soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.